Welcome to the 2023 CDL Air Brakes Practice Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the question. Question one, is it accurate that the supply pressure gauge informs you about the timing of the S-cam turning? A, true. B, false. C, only during cold weather. D, only on steep descents. The correct answer is B, false. The supply pressure gauge in an air brake system does not provide information about the timing of the S-cam turning. The gauge displays the available air pressure for braking, which is essential for brake operation, but it does not indicate the timing of specific brake components such as the S-cam. Question two, is it accurate that brake fade exclusively occurs in drum brakes? A, true. B, false. C, only during nighttime driving. D, only on vehicles with low tire pressure. The correct answer is B, false. While brake fade can indeed occur in drum brakes, it is not limited to this type of brake system. Brake fade can also affect other types of brakes, such as disc brakes, due to excessive heat buildup from prolonged and intense braking, leading to reduced braking efficiency. Question 3. Is it accurate that spring pressure is typically used to secure the emergency brake on a heavy vehicle due to the potential for air pressure leakage? A. True. B. False. C. Only during warm weather. D. Only on vehicles with hydraulic brakes. The correct answer is A. True. Spring pressure is commonly employed to hold the emergency brake in position on heavy vehicles since air pressure may dissipate over time, potentially affecting the brake's reliability. The spring-activated emergency brake provides an extra layer of safety by ensuring the brake's engagement even if air pressure is lost. Question 4. Is it accurate that certain vehicles feature an independent air tank that can be utilized to disengage the spring brakes? A. True. B. False. C. Only during nighttime driving. D. Only on vehicles with manual transmissions. The correct answer is A. True. Certain vehicles are equipped with an additional air tank that serves the purpose of releasing the spring brakes. This mechanism offers an alternative method for disengaging the spring brakes when necessary, contributing to braking flexibility and control. Question 5. Is it accurate that the dual air brake system comprises the primary and secondary systems? A. True. B. False. C. Only on vehicles with automatic transmissions. D. Only during wet road conditions. The correct answer is A. True. The dual air brake system consists of two interconnected systems, the primary and secondary systems. This arrangement enhances redundancy and ensures reliable braking performance, even if one of the systems encounters an issue. Question 6. Is it accurate that the spring brakes engage when there is a significant decrease in air pressure? A. True. B. False. C. Only during daytime hours. D. Only on vehicles with manual transmissions. The correct answer is A. True. Spring brakes are designed to activate when there is a substantial drop in air pressure, ensuring that the brakes engage automatically in the event of an air pressure loss, thus enhancing safety by preventing unintended movement of the vehicle. Question 7. Is it accurate that the parking brake should not be utilized when the brakes are extremely hot? A. True. B. False. C. Only on vehicles with automatic transmissions. D. Only during rainy weather. The correct answer is A. True. Applying the parking brake when the brakes are excessively hot can lead to brake damage, as it may cause uneven cooling and potential warping of brake components. Waiting for the brakes to cool down before engaging the parking brake helps prevent such issues and maintains the brake system's integrity. Question 8. 
Is it accurate that the total stopping distance at a speed of 55 million per hour under normal conditions is approximately 100 feet? A. True. B. False. C. Only during daytime hours. D. Only on vehicles with manual transmissions. The correct answer is B. False. The total stopping distance at a speed of 55 miles under normal conditions is generally greater than 100 feet, considering the combined distances for perception, reaction, and braking. It is crucial to allow for sufficient stopping distance to ensure safe driving and braking. Question 9. Is it accurate that modern air brake systems incorporate three distinct braking systems, namely service, parking, and emergency brakes? A. True. B. False. C. Only on vehicles with automatic transmissions. D. Only during wet road conditions. The correct answer is A. True. Modern air brake systems are designed with three separate braking systems service brakes for regular vehicle stopping, parking brakes for securing the vehicle when parked, and emergency brakes to be utilized in critical situations. This multi-system setup enhances overall brake performance and safety. Question 10. Is it accurate that the air compressor regulator governs the timing of air compression and its release into the air storage tanks? A. True. B. False. C. Only during nighttime driving. D. Only on vehicles with hydraulic brakes. The correct answer is A. True. The air compressor regulator plays a vital role in managing the air compression process, determining when the air compressor will pump air into the air storage tanks. This regulation is essential to maintaining optimal air pressure levels within the braking system for effective brake operation. Question 11. Is it accurate that the alcohol evaporator's purpose is to condense the air within the brake system? A. True. B. False. C. Only during cold weather. D. Only on vehicles with automatic transmissions. The correct answer is B. False. The alcohol evaporator is utilized to prevent the buildup of moisture within the air brake system. It does this by introducing alcohol vapor into the system to inhibit the condensation of water, which can potentially lead to brake system issues in colder conditions. Question 12. Is it accurate that the initial tank to which the air compressor delivers air is equipped with a safety relief valve to safeguard both the tank and the entire system from excessive air pressure? A. True. B. False. C only during daytime hours. D. Only on vehicles with manual transmissions. The correct answer is A. True. The presence of a safety relief valve in the first air tank served by the air compressor prevents the buildup of unsafe air pressure, helping to maintain the integrity of the tank and the overall air brake system. This safety measure ensures proper functioning and minimizes the risk of pressure-related damage. Question 13. Is it accurate that if your vehicle veers to one side during the testing of the service brakes, it indicates a potential issue with the service brakes? A. True. B. False. C. Only during wet road conditions. D. Only on vehicles with automatic transmissions. The correct answer is A. True. If your vehicle exhibits a tendency to pull to one side while testing the service brakes, it could be indicative of an imbalance or malfunction in the braking system on the side toward which the vehicle is pulling. This issue should be addressed promptly to ensure even and effective braking performance. Question 14. Is it accurate that when descending a lengthy or steep downgrade, the braking power of the engine should be reinforced by utilizing the brakes? A. True. B. False. C. Only on vehicles with manual transmissions. D. Only during dry weather conditions. The correct answer is A. True. When navigating a long or steep downhill slope, the engine's braking effect alone might be insufficient to maintain a safe speed. To prevent brake overheating and potential brake fade, it's essential to supplement the engine's braking power 
with controlled and intermittent use of the brakes. Question 15. Is it accurate that you should exert consistent pressure on the brakes and firmly grip the steering wheel? When the wheels lock up, A, true, B, false, C, only during nighttime driving, D, only during wet road conditions. The correct answer is B, false. When the wheels lock up, it's recommended to release the brake pressure slightly and carefully steer in the direction you want to go. This allows the tires to regain traction and facilitates regaining control of the vehicle, enhancing safety during braking maneuvers. Question 16. What does the air compressor governor regulate in an air brake system? A. The application of parking brakes. B. When the compressor will pump air into the storage tanks. C. The pressure in the brake chambers. D. The activation of emergency brakes. The correct answer is B. When the compressor will pump air into the storage tanks. The air compressor governor is responsible for managing the operation of the air compressor, determining the timing of air compression, and maintaining appropriate air pressure levels within the storage tanks. This ensures the availability of compressed air for effective brake operation and overall system functionality. Question 17. In modern air brake systems, there are three distinct subsystems, the service brake, the parking brake, and the A emergency brake, B, exhaust brake, C, hydraulic brake, D, engine brake. The correct answer is A, emergency brake. Modern air brake systems consist of the service brake for regular braking, the parking brake for securing the vehicle, and the emergency brake, which can be utilized in critical situations to ensure rapid and effective braking when needed. Question 18. In the event of a leak in the air compressor, what component ensures that air remains within the tank? A. Pressure relief valve. B. Regulator valve. C. Safety relief valve. D. The one-way check valve. The correct answer is D. The one-way check valve. The one-way check valve prevents air from flowing back into the air compressor tank, maintaining air pressure within the system and helping to ensure proper brake operation. Question 19. What equipment is mandatory for vehicles equipped with air brakes? A. A tire pressure gauge to monitor tire conditions. B. An air pressure gauge to indicate the pressure available for braking. C. A fuel efficiency gauge to track fuel consumption. D. An engine temperature gauge to monitor engine health. The correct answer is B an air pressure gauge to indicate the pressure available for braking. Vehicles equipped with air brakes are required to have an air pressure gauge as part of their braking system. This gauge provides essential information about the air pressure available for effective brake operation, ensuring safe driving and braking performance. Question 20. What is the maximum allowable air leakage rate measured in PSI for a straight truck or bus air brake system with the engine off and the brakes released? A, 2 PC, B, 1 PC, C, 3 PC, D, 4 PC. The correct answer is A, 2 PC. A straight truck or bus air brake system must not exceed a leakage rate of 2 PC per minute under specified conditions. This ensures the integrity of the braking system and maintains proper braking performance. Question 21. What typically restrains the parking and emergency brakes while driving under normal conditions? A. Hydraulic pressure. B. Spring tension. C. Cable tension. D. Air pressure. The correct answer is D. Air pressure. Parking and emergency brakes in air brake systems are commonly held back by air pressure. This pressure keeps the brakes disengaged during regular driving and only activates them when the air pressure is released, ensuring controlled braking when needed. Question 22. What steps should you follow to assess the free play in manual slack adjusters? A. Apply the parking brake, release the clutch, and shift to neutral. B. 
Park on a hill, engage the parking brake, and release the clutch. C. Park on level ground, chalk the wheels, and release the parking brake. D. Depress the brake pedal while in motion and listen for any unusual sounds. The correct answer is C. Park on level ground, chalk the wheels, and release the parking brake. To properly check the free play in manual slack adjusters, it's essential to park on level ground, secure the wheels with chocks to prevent movement, and release the parking brake. This allows for accurate assessment of brake adjustment and ensures optimal braking performance. Question 23. Who is authorized to evaluate the functionality of spring brakes? A. Any driver with air brake endorsement. B. Vehicle owners and operators. C. Mechanics certified in brake service. D. Can only be tested by highly trained brake service people. The correct answer is D. Can only be tested by highly trained brake service people. The assessment of spring brake effectiveness requires the expertise of highly trained brake service professionals. Due to the technical nature of these tests and the critical role of spring brakes in safe vehicle operation, only qualified personnel should conduct such evaluations. Question 24. What factor contributes to a longer total stopping distance for air brakes compared to hydraulic brakes? A. Brake fade. B. Brake lag. C. Brake responsiveness. D. Brake modulation. The correct answer is B. Brake lag. Brake lag, the delay between the time the brake pedal is pressed and the actual brake application, results in a longer total stopping distance for air brakes. This delay is due to the time required for compressed air to travel through the system and engage the brakes, impacting the overall braking performance. Question 25. What is the initial action to take upon the activation of a low-pressure warning? A. Stop and safely park as soon as possible. B. Shift to a lower gear and continue driving. C. Increase speed and maintain driving. D. Ignore the warning and proceed cautiously. The correct answer is A. Stop and safely park as soon as possible. When the low pressure warning activates, it is crucial to promptly address the issue by stopping the vehicle and parking in a safe location. This helps prevent potential brake system failure and ensures the safety of both the driver and other road users. Question 26. Why does air braking generally require more time to engage compared to hydraulic braking? A. Utilize a higher brake fluid pressure. B. Require specialized brake fluid for optimal performance. C. Have smaller brake components. D. Need to have airflow through the lines to work. The correct answer is D. Need to have airflow through the lines to work. Air brakes necessitate the flow of air through the brake lines to enable brake activation. This requirement contributes to a slight delay in the braking process when compared to hydraulic systems, where brake fluid is immediately pressurized for faster response. Question 27. Why is it advised against using the fanning technique, repeated on-off braking, during extended downhill descents, according to experts? A. Fanning can cause excessive wear on brake components. B. Fanning can lead to increased fuel consumption. C. The short time off the brakes does not allow the brakes to cool. D. Fanning can result in brake fade. The correct answer is C. The short time off the brakes does not allow the brakes to cool. Engaging in the fanning technique does not provide sufficient time for the brakes to cool down between brake applications leading to potential brake fade and diminished braking effectiveness over the course of a prolonged downhill descent. Question 28. How often should you drain the air tanks if your vehicle lacks automatic tank drains, considering that the accumulation of oil and water in these tanks can lead to brake failure? A. Uh, every day. B. Monthly. Once a week. D. Only when the air pressure drops significantly. The correct answer is A. Every day. 
to prevent brake failure caused by the buildup of oil and water in the air tanks, it is recommended to drain the tanks daily. This regular maintenance practice ensures the integrity of the brake system and helps maintain optimal braking performance. Question 29. What is the minimum air pressure threshold in the service air tanks at which a warning must be visible to the driver? A. 40 psi. B. 50 psi. C. 70 psi. D. 60 psi. The correct answer is D. 60 psi. The driver must have a clear warning indication when the air pressure in the service air tanks drops below 60 psi. This ensures that the driver is promptly informed of any decrease in air pressure, allowing for appropriate and timely action to address potential brake system issues. Question 30. At approximately what pressure does a safety relief valve in an air brake system typically open? A. 100 psi. B. 125 psi. C. 150 psi. D. 175 psi. The correct answer is C. 150 psi. A safety relief valve in an air brake system typically opens at around 150 psi to prevent excessive pressure buildup, ensuring the safety and proper operation of the braking system. Question 31. When certain brakes within the system are performing more labor than others, what outcome is likely to occur? A. The brakes will become less effective. B those brakes will develop more heat. C. The brakes will wear evenly. D. The brakes will require less maintenance. The correct answer is B. Those brakes will develop more heat. In scenarios where specific brakes handle a heavier workload, like during downhill descents, increased friction will cause these brakes to generate more heat. This heightened heat production can lead to brake fade and decreased braking efficiency, making it crucial to monitor brake temperatures in such situations. Question 32. If your safety relief valve has been activated multiple times, what does this indicate? A. The system needs immediate attention. B. The air tanks are overfilled. C. Routine maintenance is required. D. The air compressor is functioning optimally. The correct answer is A. The system needs immediate attention. The repeated activation of the safety relief valve signifies that the air pressure in the system has exceeded safe limits multiple times. This situation necessitates prompt attention to diagnose and rectify the underlying issue to ensure the proper operation and safety of the air brake system. Question 33. At what minimum air pressure threshold is the activation of the low air warning alarm required? A. 60 Ps. B. 50 Ps. C. 40 Ps. D. 70 Ps. The correct answer is A. 60 Ps. The low air warning alarm must be designed to activate by 60 Ps, serving as a crucial safety feature that alerts the driver when the air pressure in the system is nearing a potentially unsafe level, prompting timely action to address the situation. Question 34. When the brakes are released on a single vehicle, what is the maximum permissible air loss? A. 2 Ps. B. 1 Ps. C. 3 Ps. D. 4 PC. The correct answer is A. 2 PC. In a single vehicle with the brakes released, the allowable air loss should not exceed 2 PC per minute. This standard ensures the integrity of the air brake system and maintains the proper functioning of the brakes. Question 35. When testing the air compressor on a dual air brake vehicle, initiate a fast idle of the engine to pressurize the air system. During this process, your gauges should indicate a. Pressure drop below 60 psi. B. No change in air pressure. C. Your pressure builds from 85 to 100 psi within 45 seconds. D. Slight air pressure increase. The correct answer is C. Your pressure builds from 85 to 100 psi within 45 seconds. Properly functioning air compressors in dual air brake systems should rapidly elevate air pressure from 85 to 100 psi within 45 seconds during the testing procedure, ensuring reliable brake performance and system integrity.
Question 36. Spring brakes are activated by what alternative method other than air, electrical, or hydraulic systems? A. Mechanical linkage. B. Vacuum pressure. C. Pneumatic pressure. D. Manual lever. The correct answer is A. Mechanical linkage. Spring brakes engage through mechanical linkage, which is a fail-safe mechanism that operates independently of air, electrical, or hydraulic systems. This ensures the ability to apply the brakes even if the primary systems fail. Question 37. In the context of air brakes on most large vehicles, spring brakes blank. A. Increase air pressure during braking. B. Are part of both the parking and emergency brakes. C. Assist in gear shifting. D. Enhance engine performance. The correct answer is B. Are part of both the parking and emergency brakes. Spring brakes serve a dual purpose as they play a crucial role in both the parking and emergency brake systems of most large vehicles with air brakes, ensuring reliable safety measures in both scenarios. Question 38. What is the color of the parking control knob located on the dashboard of the vehicle? A. Yellow. B. Green. C. Blue. D. Red. The correct answer is A. Yellow. The parking control knob on the dashboard is typically identified by its yellow color, providing a visual reference for drivers to engage or disengage the parking brake in air brake equipped vehicles. Question 39. What factor could lead to insufficient braking power across all air brake systems on a vehicle? A. Low air pressure. B. Brakes being out of adjustment. C. Malfunctioning compressor. D. Damaged brake lines. The correct answer is B. Brakes being out of adjustment. If the brakes are out of proper adjustment, it can result in reduced braking power across all air brake systems on the vehicle, impacting overall braking efficiency and safety. Question 40. In the event of a low air pressure warning, what action should you take as a driver? A. Continue driving cautiously. B. Speed up to reach your destination faster. C. Ignore the warning and proceed. D. Pull off the road as soon as it is safe to do so. The correct answer is D. Pull off the road as soon as it is safe to do so. When the low air pressure warning activates, it signals a potentially unsafe condition. To address this, it is crucial to promptly pull off the road when it is safe, allowing you to assess and rectify the situation before continuing your journey. Question 41. What is the typical setting for the cut-in pressure in PSI? A. 80 B. 90 C. 100 D. 110 The correct answer is C. 100 the cut-in pressure, commonly set at 100 PSI, refers to the minimum air pressure level at which the air compressor begins to refill the air tanks, ensuring optimal brake system functionality and safety. Question 42. At what frequency should you perform the task of draining your air tanks? A. Weekly. B. Daily. C. After every trip. D. Monthly. The correct answer is B. Daily. To prevent the accumulation of moisture and contaminants, it is advisable to drain your air tanks on a daily basis, ensuring the proper functioning of your air brake system and maintaining optimal safety. Question 43. Among the options provided, which one does not fall within the category of an air brake subsystem? A. Service brake system. B. Parking brake system. C. Emergency brake system. D. Spring brake system. The correct answer is D. Spring brake system. While the service brake, parking brake, and emergency brake systems are integral components of the air brake setup, the spring brake system is not considered a separate air brake subsystem. Rather, it operates in conjunction with the parking brake system to provide an additional layer of safety. Question 44. What term refers to a wigwag? A. 
a mechanical arm that signals low air pressure. B, a type of air brake valve. C, an air compressor governor. D, a pressure regulator for the air tanks. The correct answer is A, a mechanical arm that signals low air pressure. A wigwag is a mechanical arm that serves as an indicator signaling low air pressure within the air brake system, alerting drivers to address potential issues before they impact braking performance. Question 45. What PSI value is typically established as the cutout pressure? A. 80. B. 125. C. 100. D. 150. The correct answer is B. 125. The cutout pressure, commonly set at 125, PSI represents the air pressure threshold at which the air compressor ceases its operation, preventing the air tanks from becoming excessively pressurized and contributing to the proper functioning of the air brake system. Question 46. Front brake limiting valves are typically present in which category of vehicles? A. Modern trucks and buses. B. Vehicles manufactured after 1975. C. Older vehicles made before 1975. D. High-speed commercial vehicles. The correct answer is C. Older vehicles made before 1975. Front brake limiting valves are commonly found in older vehicles produced before 1975, serving to limit the application of front brakes and enhance overall braking performance. Question 47. In order to mitigate the potential formation of ice, certain air brake systems incorporate A. An alcohol evaporator B a pressure regulator valve, C, a manual drain valve, D, an auxiliary air tank. The correct answer is A, an alcohol evaporator. An alcohol evaporator is integrated into air brake systems to help prevent the accumulation of ice within the system by introducing alcohol vapor, which lowers the freezing point of any condensation that may form. Question 48. At a speed of 55 MPH, the brake lag, associated with air brake vehicles, can extend your total stopping distance by approximately A. 10 feet B. 20 feet C. 32 feet D. 50 feet The correct answer is C. 32 feet When traveling at 55 mph, the presence of brake lag in air brake vehicles can increase the overall stopping distance by approximately 32 feet highlighting the importance of accounting for this factor in braking maneuvers. Question 49. During the examination of service brakes, what should you watch out for? A. Reduced air pressure in the tanks. B. Pulling to either side. C. Unusual noises from the engine. D. The air compressor cycling frequently. The correct answer is B. Pulling to either side. When assessing the service brakes, it's important to be vigilant for any signs of imbalance or uneven braking force. Pulling to either side is a potential indication of such a problem, suggesting that one side of the vehicle is braking more effectively than the other. Question 50. In more recent vehicles, parking brakes are engaged using A. A yellow diamond-shaped push-pull knob B a foot pedal on the left side of the driver's seat, C, a blue round button on the dashboard, D, a red lever located near the steering column. The correct answer is A, a yellow diamond-shaped push-pull knob. Contemporary vehicles often feature a yellow diamond-shaped push-pull knob for engaging the parking brake, contributing to ease of use and accessibility for drivers. Question 51. What three braking systems make up a CMV's air brake system? A. Service, trailer and parking brake systems. B. Service, parking and emergency brake systems. C. Back, front and parking brake systems. D. Trailer, front and back brake systems. The correct answer is B. Service, parking and emergency brake systems. Service, parking and emergency brake systems. The parking brake system applies and releases the parking brakes when you use the parking brake control. The service brake system applies and releases the brakes when you use the brake pedal during normal driving. The emergency brake system uses parts of the service and parking brake systems to stop the CMV in case of a brake system failure. 
Question 52. How much following distance does a 60 FT truck traveling under 40 mph need? A. 10 seconds. B. 6 seconds. C. 4 seconds. D. 9 seconds. The correct answer is B. 6 seconds. For timed intervals, following distance, use the following heavy vehicle formula. One second required for each 10 feet of vehicle length at speeds under 40 mph. Above 40 mph, use the same formula, then add one second for the additional speed. Question 53. What are spring brakes? A. Brakes used for emergency and parking brake systems. B. Powerful springs held back by air pressure. When air is released, the springs allow for braking. C. Brakes that will come on fully when air pressure drops below 20 to 45 psi. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. All trucks, truck tractors, and buses must be equipped with emergency brakes and parking brakes. Spring brakes are usually used to meet this requirement. Question 54. How do you know if your vehicle is equipped with anti-lock brakes? A. A yellow-colored lamp with the letters ABS will be located on the vehicle's instrument panel when the vehicle is turned on. B. There's no need to know. C. The CMV will break faster than usual. D. None of the above. The correct answer is A. A yellow-colored lamp with the letters ABS will be located on the vehicle's instrument panel when the vehicle is turned on. Your CMV will have a ABS malfunction warning light that will illuminate when the vehicle is first turned to the on position. All trailers manufactured on or after March 1, 1998 are required to have ABS brakes. If the trailer was manufactured prior to that date, check under the vehicle for the ECU and wheel speed sensor wires coming from the back of the brakes. Question 55. The blank is connected to the engine and pumps air into the storage tanks. A. Air storage tanks. B. Dual air brakes. C. Air compressor. D. Air drains. The correct answer is C. Air compressor. Gears or a V-belt are used to connect the air compressor to the engine. The compressor may be cooled by the engine cooling system. If it does not have its own oil supply, then it is lubricated by engine oil. Question 56. And blank helps prevent ice and air brake valves in cold weather. A. Alcohol evaporator. B. Brake dicer. C. Air brake heater. D. None of the above. The correct answer is A. Alcohol evaporator. Some air brake systems are equipped with an alcohol evaporator. It helps reduce the risks of ice in air brake valves and other parts by putting alcohol into the air system. Ice in the air brake system is dangerous and could cause the brakes to fail. Question 57. What is not part of the brake drum? A. Brake chamber. B. Slack adjuster. C. Brake cam. D. Draining valve. The correct answer is D. Draining valve. The braking drums are located on both sides of the vehicle's axis. The braking mechanism is inside the drum and bolted to the wheels. The brake shoes and linings are pushed against the drum to stop the vehicle. Question 58. A yellow diamond-shaped push-pull control knob is used to activate the blank. A. Service brake. B. ABS. C. Parking brake. D. Control valves. The correct answer is C. Parking brake. A yellow diamond shape knob is used to apply the parking brake in newer vehicles. Some older vehicles use a lever. The parking brake should always be applied when the vehicle is parked. Question 59. Most heavy duty vehicles use blank for safety A. Dual air brakes. B. Anti lock brakes. C. Triple air brakes. D all of the above. The correct answer is A. Dual air brakes. A single set of controls is used to operate a dual air brake system. Two separate air brake systems are used. One system operates the primary brakes in the front of the vehicle and the other operates the brakes on the rear axles. Question 60. 
the low air pressure warning light and buzzer will activate at blank PSI. A. 65. B. 85. C. 30 to 40. D. 60. The correct answer is D. 60. When testing the air brake system, drivers should make sure that the low air pressure warning light and buzzer activate at 60 PSI. After the buzzer and light activate, the driver should continue to pump the brakes until the parking brake is activated between 45 and 20 PSI. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.